What we have here is the Variac. You've seen this before in other videos. What we're going to do with this Variac is we're going to... This is a isolation transformer. It's 115 volts AC in and out. So we're isolated from the utilities. Back over here we have a 6,000 volt neon transformer. There is no uh, ground fault on this one here. This is a open face transformer. It's a transformer. It's number 6025SG-U. It's uh, 6,000 volts at 25 milliamps. So what we're going to do here, we've got a couple microwave oven capacitors here. They're a couple thousand volts each. They're about one microfarad. We've got the uh, capacitors hooked to earth ground, which happens to be my RF ground. And we also have one of the banana jacks is hooked into a, the spark gap. This is uh, based on the Edward Ed Gray uh, work. The uh, uh, let me see the uh, where is that paperwork here. So highly organized in this laboratory here. Anyhow, Edward Gray. Uh, it's patent number 4595975. And there was a book written by uh, Dr. Peter uh, Lindeman. He's with the Bandini clan. Uh, does some work with done some work with him. Anyhow, I'm gonna give you a link to that book you wrote. This is based on the interpretation of Ed Gray's uh, work and the other patent 95959975 deals with the uh, conversion tube which just happens to be kind of the same configuration I had in the uh, spark gap that I built. Uh, there's two tubes inside here, half inch tube inside of a three quarter inch uh, stainless steel tube based on the Stan Myers stuff he used. Uh, so I had some extra parts. These are uh, TIG welding tips on the end. Uh, three sixteenths electrodes inside. With the Ed Gray effect, we'll get a picture of the Ed Gray. This was his tube he had here. I had seen this patent a couple years ago, but never really paid too much attention. Then I realized after finding this on the internet, this is similar to what I've got here. So I've been exploiting some of the capabilities of this scarp spark, spark gap that I designed. Anyhow, so what we're doing here, we're actually taking electricity from the outside of this spark gap, which is what a Ed Gray did, uh, which is based on the Tesla stuff, Tesla's uh, later works. Anyhow, when, in, uh, when uh, Tesla worked for Edison, he realized that when he turns on the dynamo at the uh, power station, you get a lot of these blue sparks coming out of the uh, wires till everything started to flow, and some of the workers were killed from these sparks. So it was fascinating to him, and he started looking into what's going on here, and that's how he started doing a lot of his later experiments, giving up on alternate AC, high-frequency AC, and was dealing with the uh, DC uh, quick switch DC so anyhow what we found out here is we can actually extract and that's how Ed Gray actually got his motors and stuff running he uh, as the spark gap is uh, is discharging in here and the plasma uh, is actually releasing electrons to the outer uh, housing uh, and we are actually ex extracting uh, electrons from the outer housing here and there's no connection to the outer housing to the electrodes so all the electrons that are coming from the outer housing here it's really hard to tell let me see here okay we also have some neon dimian magnets one on top there's one on top and there's one on the bottom down here and this with another tesla invention he was controlling the frequency by the size of the capacitor as well as the uh, strength of the magnetic field to magnetically blow out the spark gap. Other people that do the uh, Tesla, the Tesla coilers use the same kind of stuff. Anyhow, so what we're doing here is actually <clears throat> extracting electrons from the outer case of this uh, spark gap assembly and using the earth ground 
And then we're going to shut that down here. This is my Faraday cage. Keep the RF inside the box instead of damaging people and getting into the environment. So what we have over here is a fluorescent tube. And that spark gap you've just seen is hooked to uh, a couple of these microwave oven capacitors over here. We have a voltmeter here, it's an AC voltmeter. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna fire this thing up and you're gonna see the voltage and how the light will actually light up. It, it takes you know, 500 or some volts to get it going and then the voltage is gonna drop down. So it'll go over 500 volts before it starts firing up and then eventually it'll go on down. Uh, so here we go, I'm gonna turn it on now, bring the voltage up and you can see the voltage is climbing and the light is still not lit here this is what the waveform is looking like right now and we're going to continue to turn the variac up there's about 500 and the light just started to flicker and we're going to go back to the voltmeter here and we're over 500 volts there see the light is still not going although it flickered we're going to continue to turn it up until that thing lights in fact we can get both of them here So we're almost 600 volts right here. They're lit off. One more time. I'm going to turn it up still. There we go. Okay, lit off. You see the voltage is 300. I'm not doing anything with the Variac. It's on its own. The light is still going, and that should drop down here momentarily. This is what the waveform is looking like now. Light's going. Running about 300 volts, and this is all off the spark gap. This is what the free energy of Ed Gray's invention was based on. And we're running about, yeah, it's hard to tell. Yeah, it's about 40 some volts, less than 40 volts on the Variac. And so this is all from the explosions outside the spark gap itself, extracting those electrons, going to ground. And we're going to turn up a little bit more. You can see it's going to drop down. Light's bright, lighting up a little harder, a little brighter. There we go. Still lit. And I've got this thing wide open now. And the fan is going on this. This is the uh, isolation transformer. So this neon is isolated from utility with this isolation transformer. This isolation transformer is powered up by the Variac. So there's the light going. Neon, we've got the microwave oven transformer or uh, capacitors. I say it's about two. Uh, this is the Variac. We're running uh, about 115 volts right there. And this is, I've got two. Uh, this is based, this circuit is actually based on Donald Smith's stuff. Uh, except for the capacitor. The capacitor is actually hooked up according to some of the Ed Gray's uh, circuit. This is the uh, circuit we're using here right now. Neon transformer. The uh, body of the transformer itself is going to earth ground and this is all isolated over here on the on the input side. 115 Variac over here. Tra uh, the uh, diodes, high voltage diodes are running backwards like uh, Patrick Kelly was saying in the document that he uh, he modified uh, Don Smith's document. Some of the people suggested these diodes need to go backwards. That's what Don they felt were, was doing. So we've got the C1 capacitor, which happens to be 329 nanofarads, and then we got the 76 turn coil in here. Spark gap here is what you've seen. We're actually extracting electrons from the spark gap. These are actually meters going to ground instead of a meter we actually have a couple of capacitors in here in ser uh, in parallel and then we've got the knee uh, we got the fluorescent light so you get two microfarads of capacitors and then the fluorescent light is all in parallel here uh, with the ground and again that's based on Ed Gray's stuff let me see if I can get that patent again here 
a lot of notes. All the work I do, I keep notes because I forget what I did yesterday. Gotta have notes. Okay, this is the Ed Gray's patent. Uh, so, right here is number 38. This is the uh, capacitor. So, this is the tube. You got the spark gap in here. He's got a resistor in here, which we don't have. And then he's extracting electrons from uh, the spark gap assembly. He also shows a uh, triode tube in here and a uh, mm, rotary. I forget what he called it to modulate this, but we don't have any of that. Battery is over here. So that's that's what Ed Gray was using. So this number 38 capacitor is what we have hooked up. We've got two capacitors for number 38. And it goes to the positive of the battery. So the positive is less negative than the uh, discharge here. So anyhow, as far as the ground, we're going to actually go into earth ground over here. So this battery is being replaced with the capacitor. Next, we're going to actually put a uh, diode here so we can simulate the battery and then eventually put a battery inside here. That's the waveform again. We've got those two diodes here. I think one is stronger than the other. So I'm going to try changing them out. So both of these spikes should be the same. It's 120 volt uh, cycles per second. And this is what the uh, voltage is running right here. So, there you have it.